morning everyone this is dr neha khodke and i am back for yet another session of zomio classroom today we will be seeing an acute case a case of dysmenorrhea let's start please keep your notebooks ready with a pen so that you can jot down the totality of symptoms that you feel are characteristic you can use your laptop you can simultaneously also use homepad zomio in case you do not have homepad zomio you can always download the trial version which is free of cost for a month and you can use it while attending these sessions going back to the case this is the case of a 24 year old female homemaker married since one year who came with a complaint of severe pain in the hypogastrium since one day hypogastrium is the lower abdomen the pain radiates to the back and both thighs pain is intermittent in nature better by lying on the abdomen better by pressure also during periods she experiences an increased thirst as well as constipation there is a general bitter taste in her mouth so the patient has got her menses one day prior menses have been appearing 2 to 3 days before the due date since 5 to 6 months the patient has this complaint of pain during menses so it is fairly recent pain starts 1 to 2 hours before menses appear lasts for 3 days during menses and she feels better or the pain reduces after menses get over she has taken allopathic medications earlier to control the pain now on examination we saw that she has no significant past history her father and elder brother are asthmatic her weight currently was 44 kg or 44 kg pulse was normal however blood pressure was low 90 by 60 conjunctiva normal pink there were slight white spots on her nails all other examination findings were normal and the sonography was also normal so there was no pathology involved so the diagnosis given is primary dysmenorrhea which means there is dysmenorrhea or painful menses without any organic cause now the general feeling is that periods are supposed to be painful but this is a mistaken belief periods are not supposed to be painful they are only supposed to be mildly discomforting and that is why any kind of pain in the lower abdomen in the back during menses is considered a symptom is considered abnormal pain is not a normal sensation when it comes to menses or periods now when we look at the homeopathic or hanumanian classification since she has been getting this pain for the past 5 to 6 months it is obviously a chronic miasmatic disease however we need to control the pain that she is experiencing as of now and that is why it is an acute periodical state of chronic miasmatic disease we first deal with the acute complaints and then move on to giving her a constitutional or an antimiasmatic to take care of the underlying miasmatic influence in her that has led to painful menses 
So, how do we approach this case? As I mentioned, because the patient has come to us during an acute exacerbation or an acute periodical state of a chronic complaint, we will first manage the symptoms that are present during the acute state. Once she feels better, we shall give a constitutional remedy to stop recurrence. See, periods are going to happen to her every month. So, we need to ensure that those periods are painless and uneventful. So, the totality of symptoms to be considered in this case involves the characteristic physical complaints that we can get or we can extract at that point of time. Remember, the patient is in a lot of pain. She may not be able to answer a lot of questions. She may not be able to answer about her general mental state before the menses or after the menses. And that is why as doctors, we need to be considerate and compassionate enough to find the correct remedy within the symptoms that the patient is giving us at that point of time without disturbing her much. And that is why based on the symptoms that she gave at the first instance, we have formed the totality. Now here is the totality that we have formed. Let us compare and see whether it matches the totality that you have formed for this case. So, the first two symptoms that we have taken are characteristic concomitants that we saw in this patient. So, increased thirst during menses as well as constipation during menses, two symptoms that cannot be explained by the chief complaint that the patient has come with become or qualify as concomitants. And that is why they have more weightage in our totality. The next is location, which is a radiating kind of pain. Pain in abdomen that radiates to the thighs. Now, if we try to understand physiologically, the pain that she feels or the discomfort that a woman feels during menses is actually in the uterus but the nerve endings or the referred pain is actually felt in the lower abdomen and back. What it does not explain is the pain that radiates to the thighs which is why we have taken this symptom as characteristic. The next two symptoms that we take are modalities. Hypogastric pain, better by lying down. And hypogastric pain, better by pressure. In one of my previous sessions, I had explained why the aggravating modality takes more importance than the ameliorating modality. It is because the aggravating modality defines the sensitivity or the core of the patient whereas the ameliorating modality is for temporary relief. But in this case, since we did not find any aggravating modality and because the ameliorating modalities also have importance, we have taken both ameliorating modalities in our final totality. The next is the bitter taste in the mouth that she feels. Again, quite unexplained. And the last is our clinical finding, not something that the patient has said, which is a low blood pressure. Please understand that it is not just the subjective symptoms given by the patient, although subjective symptoms get more importance than the objective ones, the objective ones can also and should also be considered in the final totality and prescription for
for the patient. Now, when we take this entire totality, let us see how we can convert each of these symptoms into workable rubrics. Increased thirst during menses is converted as thirst menses during found in the stomach chapter of the complete repertory. Try to understand and analyze why certain rubrics are found in certain chapters. Why this particular rubric is found in the stomach region and not in the female genitalia region where the menses actually revolve about. The next constipation during menses found in rectum chapter as constipation menses during. Pain in abdomen radiating to the thighs is seen in the abdomen chapter where there is a rubric pain extending lower limbs to thigh. Hypogastric pain better by lying down is seen in the abdomen chapter where we have first taken the location of the pain and then we have found out its modality. So pain, hypogastrium, lying ameliorates. In a similar fashion, we have taken the next symptom, pain, hypogastrium, pressure ameliorates. Then we go in for the bitter taste in the mouth, which is a straightforward symptom found in the taste chapter of complete repertory as taste bitter. And the final rubric is what we have taken from the clinical chapter of the complete repertory, which is hypotension. So this is our final totality, friends. We will now be using Homepath Zomio to solve this case using this totality. So now we'll start recording all the rubrics from Homepath Zomio. I will be showing you different ways in which we can record the different rubrics. Now the first three rubrics we will be recording using the repertory search feature, which is the easiest feature in which you can search for and record rubrics. All you have to do is press command S from your keyboard. Once you do that, a small search bar opens in which you only have to type the keywords of the rubric that you are looking for. And the software searches for those rubrics or those keywords from all the repertories that are there. So for example, thirst during menses. I type thirst space during space menses and now I get 36 search results from which I will be choosing and recording the first rubric since it has the maximum number of remedies from the stomach chapter of the complete repertory thirst menses during. I just check this box and the rubric gets recorded. The next rubric that I would like to record is constipation during menses. Again, command S from my keyboard and I type constipation during menses. Even if you type constipation and menses, it is fine. I press enter and now I see 88 search results. Again, I select the first result which is from the rectum chapter of the complete repertory, constipation menses during. I check the box and it is selected. Now, if I would like to view the remedies that are there in this rubric, I just click on the rubric once and a small pop-up opens in which I can see all the remedies under that rubric. Okay, the third and final rubric that I would like to record 
using the repertory search feature is pain in the abdomen that extends to the thighs. Now, in many cases, we are unsure whether the rubric is pain in abdomen extending to the thighs, radiating to the thighs, going to the thighs. So, instead, we just type the main keywords. So, command S from the keyboard and we type pain, abdomen, thighs. Enter. We get 156 results out of which the first result containing maximum number of remedies that is 56 remedies is complete abdomen pain extending lower limbs to thigh 2. This is the rubric that we need and we record it by just checking the box. It's done. We have already recorded three rubrics. Moving on to the next two which is pain in the abdomen, hypogastrium, better by lying down and better by pressure. The two modalities that we have, I will be recording them using the classic view or the classic feature. For this, I select repertory and click on repertory list. I can also just press command O from my keyboard and that chapter will open. So command O and now this feature of the classic view in which I can see all the repertories and all the chapters is now opened. I would like to go to the chapter on abdomen because that is where the modality lies. So, to go to the chapter of abdomen, in the search chapter, I type a few of the letters of the chapter and the first chapter that opens is the abdomen chapter from the complete repertory. Now, in here, I want to look for pain in the hypogastrium, better by lying down. So, all I need to do is just start typing. Let me type hypogastrium lying ok. So when I type these two keywords, I see 33 search results out of which the first one is what I want. Pain, hypogastrium, lying ameliorates containing 17 remedies. I can directly record this rubric by checking the box and it's done. Now the next rubric I am looking for is pain in the hypogastrium better by pressure. So hypogastrium has already been typed. I just have to type pressure and these are the search results that I get. Now if you see the second result which is pain hypogastrium, pressure ameliorates. This is the rubric I am looking for. Now I can record the rubric by directly checking the box here or I select the rubric first or I click on the rubric rather. I go to that rubric. I can see which remedies are there and I check the box. I can record the rubric this way as well. So this was the classic way in which I can record rubrics. Now let me show you the third way which is quick symptom record. Now this is a feature that has been introduced for those doctors who would like to record the rubrics or search for the rubrics in simple language. And so I will show you the last two rubrics recorded using this feature. The last two rubrics are bitter taste in the mouth and hypotension. So I go to repertory module and I select quick symptom record. I can also open this feature by pressing the command K options on the keyboard and this is the screen that opens. 
Now the first rubric that I am looking for is a bitter taste in the mouth. All I need to do is in this search bar, I start typing bitter paste taste. I press enter and I get two search results out of which this mouth taste bitter is what I am looking for. Out of the 11 rubrics that have been linked to this word, I click on and select the first which is from the complete repertory and my rubric taste bitter is recorded. The last and final rubric is hypotension. So I type hypotension, press enter and I get only one search result which is hypotension against which there is one rubric from the complete repertory chapter clinical. I select it and now all my rubrics are recorded. Now to view my complete repertorization sheet, I click on the first icon in the black taskbar which is to view the repertorization. And now what I see is that there are more than 500 remedies that have come up with sepia being the first since it covers maximum gradation. However, if I want to see which are the remedies that cover the maximum rubrics that are recorded in spite of or despite the gradations, I click on symptoms covered. The list now rearranges and I can now see that sepia is the remedy that covers all the rubrics. Still, as a conscientious homeopath, I'd like to be very, very sure of my remedy. And this is where the repertorization filters come in. I will be using a repertorization feature to drill down the remedies and see whether I am on the right track. The filter that I would like to use is the cross repertorization filter. Basically, this filter will help me to choose the most important symptoms in my case and finally show me only those remedies that cover all of the rubrics or all of the symptoms that I consider the most important. This will help to reduce the number of remedies to a very, very large extent. It's an extremely effective filter and it's very useful in helping me decide the final remedy or prescription that I need to give. To access the cross repertorization filter, this is the filtered list that I see and this is the icon here for cross repertorization. I click on it. The list of rubrics that are recorded opens and now I will click or I will select those rubrics that I consider to be most important in my case. For me, it is the concomitants that need to take highest priority, which is why I will be selecting both the concomitants, thirst during menses and constipation during menses. And I will also be selecting hypotension, which is a clinical finding that was seen in this patient. I click on apply and now my final list only has three remedies, sepia, natrimure and amon carb. And yet sepia is the only remedy that covers all the recorded rubrics. So now I know that this is my remedy. But many homeopaths have these concepts in their head that these are chronic remedies to be only given in chronic or constitutional cases. These are acute remedies and both can never be mixed. Now this is a misconception. A lot of you may be thinking, why should I give or how rather can I give sepia in an acute case? Well, do you know that a lot of our stalwarts, the old homeopaths, have been using remedies 
like sepia, lachesis, natremure, and lycopodium in many, many acute cases and have seen fantastic results in their patients. I'll show you an example. We'll see a book on therapeutics written by one of the oldest authorities, Samuel Lilienthal. And I can show you how many constitutional remedies uh, Lilienthal has mentioned for so many acute cases and have also shown a lot of good results in actual clinical practice. Maybe after this you will be convinced that sepia is the remedy for this patient even in her acute phase. So to have a look at the therapeutics, I click on utility and I go to the second last option in the list which is therapeutics. I can read the therapeutics of either Dewey or Lilienthal. Let me go for Lilienthal since he has given a more exhaustive account of the different uh, clinical conditions and remedies. And in the search bar, I will type the chapter that I am looking for, MENS and I see menstrual and its ailments. Now, if you see the list of remedies that are there in this particular therapeutic section, you will find a lot of constitutional remedies as well that mention acute complaints like alumina, amon carb, amon mure, aurum metallicum, barita carb. Let's see if sepia also figures in this list. It's a very long list. Yes, we also have sepia and we have a very big account of the acute symptoms in sepia with relation to menses. So can you see friends how we can give and how that notion is wrong where there are chronic remedies and where there are acute remedies and both cannot be mixed with each other. They can be given if the situation and the case demands. Because we need to be unprejudiced physicians and observers first. So now I am sure that sepia is my remedy and I will be prescribing sepia to this patient. Apart from the medicines, I would also like to give a list of do's and don'ts to this patient. Now these are auxiliary measures that she will follow. Why it is necessary for me to give do's and don'ts to her? is for two reasons. One, because the correct do's and don'ts will complement the remedy that I have given and will boost the action of the remedy and will hasten the healing process in the patient. The second reason is that if there is any kind of maintaining cause, the do's and don'ts will take care of those maintaining causes and will ensure that the maintaining causes are eliminated. Because when we have something like this, then even the correctly prescribed remedy does not work. Which is why it is very important to give auxiliary measures to the patient. So what are the do's and don'ts for dysmenorrhea? To access the do's and don'ts for dysmenorrhea, we have to go to the utility section and select the first option which is patient instruction. Clicking on patient instruction will open a new window in which there are more than 600 clinical conditions for which very specific do's and don'ts have been mentioned. And these do's and don'ts can be printed and given to your patient. Now I am looking for the specific do's and don'ts of dysmenorrhea. So I type DYSM and now I see the do's and don'ts for dysmenorrhea. I can print these do's and don'ts and give to the patient and these are going to help the patient to recover faster. It is going to help my medicine help her recover faster. So now the prescription for this patient that was given to her was sepia 200 every 4 hours considering the characteristics in the case with the susceptibility and a frequent repetition because it was an acute complaint and because 
the pain was intense. Whenever we have seen that there is a lot of pain in a case or a lot of inflammation in a case, repetition of the remedy frequently is required because an inflammation or a pain demands the medicine and it exhausts its action faster. That is why we need to repeat and replenish the remedy in the patient. Now this was the remedy response. Within 2 hours, the pain had reduced by 30% and by evening, she was better by 60%. The next day, there was only a mild discomfort, no pain. Which means that the remedy that we gave was absolutely spot on. This is how relief must be achieved in acute cases. Of course, this patient also requires an anti-miasmatic later, but first we need to handle the acute complaints. So what was the learning from this case? First, we need to identify what needs to be treated at what point of time. Learning the importance of physical examination and investigations for diagnosis of the case as well as to get the characteristics. Learning to identify the characteristics in a case to form an acute totality, which includes concomitants, modality and location. Learning the importance of auxiliary mode of treatment and no, not prejudicing ourselves as to acute remedies and chronic remedies. So I hope everyone that this case has given you a different learning in this session and I will see you in the next session of Zomeo Classroom. Thank you and take care.